epigenetics um, has actually been a lot of research is that even the genes that you get, people say, well, I've got an autoimmune disease because my mum has got one. I've inherited it. Mm. Well, that is bollocks. That's rubbish. You haven't inherited. You've done the same lifestyle and diet and strategy or stress levels in your mind that your parents have done. Now, epigenetics means that you have between your lifestyle and the way that you look at life and do things in life, you have 95% of shifting that epigenetics to have a different outcome. Hey, beautiful souls. Welcome to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. Today, we have a special guest with us and her name is Jo Formosa. Jo is an engaging and inspiring practitioner and international speaker with 25 years of experience incorporating her intensive knowledge across many different modalities including Ayurveda medicine, Chinese medicine, acupuncture, remedial massage diet and nutrition and also neuro strategies. She specializes in serious health conditions from cancer and digestive disorders to cardiovascular disease, diabetes and autoimmune problems. She has a knack for intuitively understanding the body and reversing the, even the most complex problems. Let's bring her on. Hi Jo, how are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. Nice to see you and hear you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's so uh, it's it took us a long time to get this podcast going because you know we were canceling <laughs> everything. Oh, um, so very busy. Yeah, I actually met you uh, at one of the Roger Hamilton's event, and um, you were speaking about Ayurveda, and um, you know it was something that I was trying to bring someone on for uh, to discuss about health, and you know there you are, university sent you my way. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. yeah, so to start off with, can you tell us about yourself, a brief overview for our listeners? Yeah, so, you know, my name um, is Jo Formosa and I live in Brisbane, Australia, um, where we are actually in the lucky part of the world, I think, with the COVID uh, virus. Um you know, and I've been a health practitioner for over 25 years now. Wow. And um, so I originally studied remedial therapy and worked with a lot of the sports uh, teams and Olympic teams. And then I went to study acupuncture, Chinese medicine. And then I went to study Ayurveda from there and then neuro strategies to link the mind and body type uh, together as well. So um, I have a practice here in Brisbane, a local practice where it's, um, you know, where we can see people physically. And I have an international practice where we connect with people internationally as well. Mm, amazing, amazing. So before we get into the health uh, topic, what was your childhood like? How were you like a child? Were you sensitive? Were you resilient? Mm. Yeah, well, my childhood was interesting because I got brought up from my mom and dad um, both together until I was nine. I was a very sporty kid. I used to love doing everything with the boys because I was a bit of a tom girl, the tomboy. Um, and I was a bit of, because I had three brothers, so you had to just fight your way through. Um, and at the age of nine, my mom and dad split. And my dad was an orphan. And so he was brought up in an orphanage and no way was he going to let his kids go. So he fought for us in court and he got full custody of us kids. Um, and so he brought us up um, and my father was very strict. So we had to just toe the line. Um, and so I sort of just did what I was told. Um, we, uh, you know, I think kids today, I hear what kids are getting up to today. We would have got a flogging like, <laughs> yes. like that they do. So we just kept very, you know, to the plan, to the rules, to the structure, um, you know, and I used to play a lot. Like we'd play every night after dinner. So we were, you know, very active, um, especially with my father around, but had to be very independent. Mm -hmm. So I think I pushed all that sensitivity down of what I had. Um, so I became, you know, sort of just get on and do it type kid. Um, and because I was the only girl, I pretty much looked after my three brothers as well. And then my father was killed in a bad accident when I was 18. And that's sort of when my world fell apart at that point, because he was like my constant, even though he was strict, 
um, you know, very, very much disappeared. And, and I think that's when some of the sensitivity probably came, you know, mm. so... So you getting into natural medicine, did your father's passing had a play in it? or? or... Well, it was interesting because my dad wanted all of my brothers and me included to be in the Air Force, Navy or Army, to be in the Defence Force where you're going to be looked after. It's going to be strict. You're going to have structure. So mm. why don't we go from one structure to the next? And I was the only one to buck the system. So I was a musician. I play flute. And I thought, oh, yeah, well, I could go in there and be... Um, like in the concert band or something. And then it got even more to the point where when he passed, um, a person in Toowoomba looked after me um, and was a school chaplain. And then I was involved in the youth group and I got exposed to a lot more other things. And then I used to always be the one massaging everybody when we were all sitting around just mm-hmm. talking and, you know, I'd be massaging everybody's shoulder. And, and the chaplain actually said to me, I think you should go and study natural medicine. And when I was 14 I had a pretty serious back injury and I got treated by a really good um, sports physician who was here in Brisbane and at that point I had that reference that I wanted to be like him or do what he did so anyway I went to study at the college that he was a teacher at um, and then also sort of fell into my passion from there. Mm, Amazing Um, so um, I know you talk about the six stages of diseases so Mm. what are they? Yeah, so in Ayurveda, there's something which is called six stages of disease. And this is written back in the textbooks of over 5,000 years. And what Ayurveda says is this never changes. This is how a disease process forms. So first of all is like accumulation. And accumulation means something is going on in the digestive system, the stomach, because the stomach is the first stage of disease. Children tell you this really well. Mummy, I have a sore tummy. No, I don't feel like eating. Mummy says, sit down and eat. You need to eat. Or daddy says, sit down and eat. You can't go to bed without dinner. And the child is like, but I'm not hungry. And at that point, if you're force fed, um, then that's when the disease process will come. Naturally, we had that first sign to not eat. Why? Because we're trying to digest the pathogen that is in the body with all its all of its energy. But if we can't digest it, then what happens is it then grows. So people who are normally sick are going and eating the sweet things and they're all eating the wrong things as opposed to letting their body fast. So the second stage of disease, if it, if it migrates into the next, And it starts to mix with what we call dosha in the body. So dosha is made up of something which is like air, Mm. fire and mucus. So air will be like um, like a lot of air moving in the body, which will cause a lot of dryness. So the person will feel like they have a lot of bloating and constipation. Or if they have heat, they'll feel like indigestion or or pain around the tummy or the um, navel area. Or if they have... um, mucus they have this feeling of nausea like I don't want to eat um, this no appetite so that's the next sign and again we ignore it what do we do we take something like a laxative to get rid of the constipation we take like an antacid to stop the heat and we take some sort of you know sinus sort of medication or something or something to stop the nausea we're treating it by a symptom but these are the stages of disease you go to a doctor or you go to pharmacy they'll say there's nothing wrong with you just take something or whatever Then it goes into the next level, which is called spreading level. So the body starts to flush and push the toxins around the body and starts to move it into the bloodstream. And then why? Because it takes it out of the stomach. It says, if I stay here, I'm going to get really sick. So it starts to just use your lymphatic system and then start pushing it. Then you feel tired. You feel fatigued. You feel heavy in your legs, heavy in your feet. You feel lethargic. So these are the signs that the toxins, because the digestion is not working properly anymore, is now flooding and spreading into the body. And at that point, we tell our clients, that's the time you should look at a detox because if you don't detox at that point disease will start coming right Mm. so then the next stage is what we call location and location means the toxins are moving around the body but they're trying to find a home they're trying to find a weak area in your body where you can't get at it so it'll go to a weak area where you have some sort of imbalance or some sort of disease like an old injury or a liver problem or a skin problem whatever and this is why you know many people can be um you're exposed to the same thing but five different people will have different responses to it right mm. so this toxin then becomes locked and becomes stuck in that tissue in uh that joint area 
um, or in the back or in the liver or, or the skin. Uh, so that's what we call location. Still, doctor says no problem, can't really give you anything, just some pain relief or disease. There's no really disease. There's nothing wrong in your blood. There's no arthritis, no nothing. And the person goes along going, I'm not feeling so great. I'm not feeling so good. They're not functioning at their best level. Next thing happens is disease. Disease means now the body has turned on the way that the system works. It's now accumulated those toxins to cause cholesterol, to cause um, diabetes, um, you know, uh, like um, asthma or, or to something that it gives it a name. And as soon as it's got a diagnosis and name, the doctors go, aha, that's where we come in because we're trained to treat symptoms. We're trained to treat disease. So now we can give you a drug, which is going to give you a side effect. And that side effect is going to cause more toxins. But <laughs> yeah. It's okay because we've dampened the first level of what's causing you the problem when we've stopped you getting in any more pain, but we've pushed it to another place, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the disease. And the last one, um, stage six, is what we call chronicity. And chronicity is autoimmune disease or cancer. So we're seeing a massive increase of this now. And why? Because people are missing the first five levels. They're not actually doing anything. They're not catching anything. They're not creating food as medicine. They're not understanding their body type, their profile. And then all of a sudden, oh, they wake up and they've got cancer or they wake up and they have autoimmune disease. It didn't just happen. It's been happening over many years of not taking care of the first um, signs at the very beginning of the process. We created something called the health spectrum. So we put three levels on top of that at the top, which is good health, optimal health and optimal health, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're actually moving people into eating for their body type, you know, their mind type, the meditating, there is awareness. Um, and these people rarely um, become sick or if they get the feeling of the first level, they know what to do to snap them out of it really, really fast. So that's obviously the best place to be because your vitality, your vibration, your awareness, your ability to see things just expands and your spiritual connection to so many things expand because you have this heightened awareness of vitality and vibration down in the lower thinking systems of the health spectrum because it's linked to the chakra. So that base chakra is really blocked. So if the base chakra is blocked, it's very difficult for everything to move through into the, the crown chakra, which is the mind is super clear and connected. Mm. Yeah. So when people are diagnosed with the serious sort of, sort of conditions like cancer or autoimmune, because I've mm -hmm. recently been, been diagnosed with autoimmune conditions called Shorigens. I can't even pronounce it properly. Um, <laughs> this is the names of it. It's just like, uh, you know, can't even say anything. So if um, what are the steps that I could do or anyone else could do to um, bring myself, my, bring my health back to balance? Yeah, so sometimes what happens is you'll get diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Sometimes autoimmune disease comes with something else as well. So we would first of all have a look at your diagnosis, have a look at your pathology, and then do like a full span of that pathology as well and go, why is this happening? We would also sometimes do autoimmune disease can come um, also from parasites. So we would also check the gut. We'll also check the microbiome. We'll create the environment for the body to have a really good flourishing immune system. But as soon as it turns itself on, it will really help. Um, it's something called epigenetics. Epigenetics um, has actually been a lot of research is that even the genes that you get, people say, well, I've got an autoimmune disease because my mum has got one. I've inherited it. Mm. Well, that is bollocks. That's rubbish. You haven't inherited. You've done the same lifestyle and diet and strategy or stress levels in your mind that your parents have done. Now, epigenetics means that you have between your lifestyle and the way that you look at life and do things in life, you have 95% of shifting that epigenetics to have a different outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, Deepak Chopra talks about this. Um, there's a lot of research and doctors talk about this. And this is why um, integrated medicine is so important because it's making sure your system is working for you to fight um, you know, uh, different diseases and processes. And, and the same thing goes with cancer. Cancer is the fact that it, it's a mute. Everyone has cancer cells in their body. It depends on whether it turns. So if you have the environment for the cancer to grow or you have the imbalance for the cancer to grow, 
And also if you have the mental toxicity, there's a lot of mental toxicity to different cancers. So there's done a lot of research, breast cancers around a lot of, you know, lack of nurturing, lack of support, feeling like you're being abandoned and all these different things. Um, so there's different cancers for different, they match to different emotional stuff. So it's, it's about that as well, you know. So this is why they can't cure, cure it with just medicine hmm. um, because it's, it is a holistic integrated approach that where you need to make your food as medicine, you need to clean your system, you need to make your mind, you know, being able to control like and, and really getting rid of the toxic like environment in mind and body. Yeah, that's so, so interesting because you my dad passed away uh, from cancer when I was there in and my mom has a serious uh, rheumatoid arthritis autoimmune condition as well. So I've been living in that environment <laughs> the most yeah. of my, because I was caring for my mom for 15 years. So I was yeah. taking her, um, the diet that we were eating is the same, the same stress level and everything was the same. It was only recently when I had my spiritual awakening about five years ago when everything started, started to shift within myself so I moved away well like, I am still in co- like contact but I moved away I moved out of my mom's place and mm-hmm. um so now my, my uh it's like I br- I'm breaking that pattern you know I'm more yeah. going more towards holistic so it's yeah. making perfect sense and you know yeah. um me being diagnosed with this it makes perfect sense <laughs> it makes perfect sense. yeah and actually now that you know you can get on top of it right mm-hmm. so you know and take the health into your own hands and actually take charge of it mm-hmm. Um, and just don't say that the amount of clients that I have who are diagnosed with something and then they live of the effects of that diagnosis or they take the drug of that. Sometimes if someone has had an autoimmune disease for two years, three years, whatever, it's been really, so we have to work with the medicine and the other strategies until their body becomes stronger and we start weaning them off them mm. as well. I had a client in America who I treated who is now 70 and at the age of, um, you know, 30, her late 30s was diagnosed with very serious hormonal imbalances. So they put her on huge amounts of drugs and hormones to balance her hormones at that age. And it's weird, like they're putting on all menopausal drugs and all different things. I'm like, why are you on that? And her system just didn't function hormonally. And then we um, have cleansed her and detoxified her. And the doctors are reducing her meds as we speak. They are going down, they're going down, we're testing her every three months and they're going down. And the doctor goes, I don't know what you're doing, but I've been treating you for 30 years and I've never seen your results like this. Yeah. What are you doing? Please just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> um, so, you know, and it gave the doctor a shock, um, but nobody looked at inside. Um, mm-hmm. She has tremors like in her lip and in her body because of the hormone imbalance of something called DHEA. Um, which is managing your stress levels and things like that, that are disappearing. Mm. And she she's had these tremors forever, you know. So so now at the age of 70, she's getting her life back and she's so like empowered now. It's really oh, great. That's amazing. Like even with my uh, I have polycystic ovarian syndrome, but apparently. Um, but I had like, you know, I'm overweight and everything. But now I use my period used to be like every six months or three months or even sometime mm. a year. And um, and since I started going towards holistic side of things, I lost weight. I've been eating mm-hmm. healthy, and my periods are every month now. Is is it's in line with full okay. moon as well, <laughs> which is it, you're you're now connected and in balance, right? And hormonal imbalance is yeah. because diet and lifestyle is not working. So many women don't realize that they don't have to have painful periods. They don't have to have difficult ability all of those things can be solved really really quickly yeah absolutely and and never and never don't, if they say there's no cure to anything don't listen to it there is cure to yeah. everything <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh you talked about ayurveda um mm-hmm. what is ayurveda and what is the history behind it mm-hmm. so ayurveda so ayu it means the science of life right um so it's over oh well it's around five thousand years old maybe probably we always say five thousand years but we say it every year so it's obviously more than five thousand years old so um it comes from india um it comes from traditional texts um and the way that it was um 
uh, it was passed down from um, mentor to teacher. Um, it is now, now, now becoming more westernized where it is now spreading. Um, and Ayurveda, some people know yoga. Yoga is the sister science of Ayurveda. So people are all doing yoga, but they don't know about Ayurveda. So yoga is the body side of um, Ayurveda, which is one of the eight limbs of how to balance the mind and body together. So um, there's three pillars of Ayurveda, which is Aha, Ahara, and Vahara. So this is your diet and lifestyle pillar, right? And then Ashadatu, which is where you bring in the natural herbs to um, treat or prevent disease. So that therefore the person, when they have those three things working, they can actually keep their body balanced and well, you know, knowing their body type. So Ayurveda looks at um, knowing your body type, you are designed at birth with a particular body type that doesn't change in your life, wow. but your imbalance can make you feel like it's changed, but it hasn't changed, getting you back to your nature, to your true nature. Um, there's a beautiful saying which Sri Sri from the Art of Living uses. He's a guru um, teacher for um, meditation. He says, health is a dynamic expression of life. Mm -hmm. So dynamically expressing, you know, what your dosha is. If you're more butter, like a skinny mini, you're always running around doing lots of things fast and you think fast and you do things quickly and you can't sit still. Or if you're more pitta, you're more organized, you're more structured, you have a, a good, strong metabolism. Vatas have like need lots of food, little bits all through the day. Pittas need like, give me food, give me now, I'll knock you out. Um, <laughs> and they have things done in a particular way and do it my way um, or it's a highway. And then Kaffas are... And Peter's are very passionate and, and very, you know, target orientated and very driven. And um, and Kaffers are more relaxed, more chilled out. They're a bigger body type. They put on weight easily, but they put on muscle easily. They have very low digestion, very low metabolism. Um, they really only need to eat two meals a day, but they tend to eat more because they love just eating and love being with people and they can be a bit lazy. So, um, but they have a lot of energy if you get them off the couch. So when you understand who you are, then you can have what's called a personalized path to health, which means you understand which is the way that you need to do things because it is unique to you. Mm, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I mean, um, how how can you find out what body type you are? So we do a health dynamics test, which um, you can find lots of body types online. That's no problem. There's heaps of free ones. But the way we've done that is that we link your mind and body type together. So you find out um, we um, have 80 different profiles um, because there's 10 different body type combinations and there's eight different mind types. So when you link them together, you work out how do you work in your mind? Like how do you best um, show your genius? Um, so somebody who's more like a creator profile is very visionary or someone who's dynamo is very visionary, someone who is more, the tempo profile is like ear to the ground, the more servant orientated. Someone who's more like blaze profile is all about the people, all about connecting with people. And some people who are like the steel side is all about the systems and the processes and the data. So they actually do health differently as well. So, you know, the dynamo profile is don't give me too many things. I can only handle two or three things at a time. Mm. The tempo profile is I like to see the whole plan for the next three months, six months, 12 months. I want to map it all out. The supporters profile is who are we doing this with? How are we going to have a party you know and the skill <laughs> profile is like yeah. i need the data i need to match the reports i need to see that it's working i need all the stats on this yeah. so they all do it differently and it also it links to how your body functions whether you're the vata one the skinny mini or you're the pitta one determined or you're the couple one a little bit more relaxed those work together and when you have that personalized path um things just you go, oh my goodness, I wish I knew this when I was 20. Mm. Um, everything sort of really starts to change. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm a blaze and a sporter. <laughs> so I'm just, yeah, quite, yes. you're quite fiery. <laughs> I'm a supporter profile and you're, a, you're a, um, a pitta body type as well. So you've got the, the pitta heat mm -hmm. in the body, but you also have the, the vata as well. Mm -hmm. um, but that sort of real drive of the supporter is sometimes um, you get to, you um, taking care of everybody else you forget to take care of yourself yes that is accurate to the point 
<laughs> right there. Um, so, uh, what foods are best to eat in different seasons, like uh, for your body types? Yeah. So the different seasons is like Vata season, Pitta season, and Kapha season, right? Mm-hmm. So um, Kapha season is very um, much like that heavier season. So you'll see a lot of those um, in winter time, right? So winter is where it is more cold. Um, so both Vata and Kapha doshas are cold. Um, so you'll see that, you know, winter and autumn and all that sort of stuff is more like the Vata and, and Kapha time. So we want to um, warm you up in those things. So we have in the colder seasons, you want to have more warm foods, more unctuous foods, more cooked foods, more stews, more soups, a little bit oleated to help heal the channel, to help move the dryness out because everything is so cold and, and can be dry. And then you come into that summer season, a little bit into the spring season, but more of the summer season is you want things to be more cooler, more lighter, more things like the mint and the coriander and the parsley's. Um, not a lot of food because you can't digest a lot in the heat. Mm. You need to lighten everything off. So if you're going to have salads, cook salads um, because cooked food is better to digest, but less of it, right? A lot of things like watermelon, which is more cooling, more foods that are going to be hydrating, more the juicy fruits. And you'll see that if you shop in the market and shop to the season, instead of just shopping from the supermarket where they import it, mm. then you're going to get the food. They'll say like no coriander in this month, right? It's like, what? No coriander. Uh, so you have to think about something else that yeah. you can use, whatever. Or there's no apples in this. What do you mean no apples? Like, <laughs> and, meant to the <laughs> yeah. Supermarket apples all year round, right? Yeah. So it changes to, you know, the summer season where it comes in with all the stone fruit and things like that. And it's more higher in sulfur. So it's because it's the cleansing process of cleansing out all the winter heavy energy. Mm. So all those summer fruits come in and your body naturally starts to detoxify and clean it from the food. So mm. uh, what about autumn and spring? Is there an the autumn and spring is on the end of those seasons? So it's a bit of both, right? Mm. So you sort of have to have some of the cooler foods and as it's sort of moving, it, it, it starts to move into that. But it's more the really peak, peak with the, the heat and the cold um is where and but you see depending on your body type if you're more of a vata person you're going to be more affected in the autumn and and the winter you're going to love the summer if you're a bit more pitta person you're going to hate the heat and hate the yes. summer the kaffas <laughs> hate the cold right um you know but but they they've got a bit more fat on them so they stay a bit insulated um but the vatas really freeze but they'll freeze in the office like everyone else is fine and they are freezing in the air con they they have to in summer take all their jackets and scarves and everything even in the air con because their circulation mm. is so much less so the different constitutions will yeah that different. makes that makes perfect sense because i'm always complaining about when it's 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 a bit when it's warm i still wear my clothes that's not like i don't wear shorts or anything you know because that, that's your vata side um but you won't be able to handle that hot intensive you no know, and or either. even winter as well i cannot handle that either so. right. because you have the pitta and vata body type so one is the heat and one is the cold mm-hmm. but if you've got someone who's got a kapha body type they hate the humidity Mm. Like the vatas love the humidity because it gives them fluid. It gives them this feeling of hydration. You put a kapha there that already has so much water and so much heat and so much, not, not heat, so much stickiness in their body. You put them in like a really hot, humid environment. They feel like they're suffocating. They feel like they can't breathe. Mm. So it's not wise to eat sort of protein, a lot of protein like meat in the summer then for the no, body caps. No, definitely not. No, definitely not much like lighter meats, like white meats and things like that, because anything that is heavy, mm-hmm. that what we call the agni, the digestive fire is not firing. So anything that is um, heavy is going to be too hard to digest and it will sit there and cause you all of these other health problems. Mm. So that's perfect because I don't eat meat. So it's, <laughs> I was like vegan. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, we deal with stress every single day. Um, how can we find that balance in our busy lives and not let it affect our health? 
Mm. So um, stress is something which is call, caused by too much vata, too much air and ether, too much movement, right? So we're living in a very vata world now, a lot of technology, a lot of things coming at us, a lot of responsibilities. So 80% of diseases come from vata imbalance. So always do something to balance vata, to oileate your body, which is like a self-oil massage, which you can do with sesame oil that definitely reduces um, stress because the butter and um, you get serotonin, you get the natural sort of love, sort of um, uh, healing, calming um, hormone floating around your body as soon as you put that oil on or in your hair. The um, alternated breathing, so uh, pranayam, like either 20 nice deep breaths or pranayam, some sort of meditation where it's grounding you on a, a daily basis and making sure you eat with like consciousness. So don't eat on the run, eat and, and be present with your food. Make sure you digest your food because there's an opposite, um, you know, when you're in fright and flight response, which you're in stress, your body is trying to climb a tree to get away from a bear or a lion, but you're not fighting a bear or a lion. You're fighting your partner or you're fighting your boss or you're fighting your customers. <laughs> and you're like, get away from me. And you're trying to run, 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 run with all this adrenaline and all this stress. At that point, you're not thinking about ordering a pizza, but why are you eating pizza right, <laughs> when you're stressed? And so you're eating the pizza and you're like, oh my goodness, where you should be stopping, you should be having some really, because the opposite hormone is on the parasympathetic nervous system where when that turns on and you're, you stop, relax, you digest, your body has all these calming hormones that go through the system and the body feels connected feels supported and when you're eating those things on the run you don't feel like you're full so you overeat you overdo it and then your stress level keeps going up and you you start pulling down the menu of how can I quickly get some food in because you crash all the time and you come up and then you crash and you come up and so that's what we call like adrenal fatigue and burnout which so many people are suffering from today mm, yeah that makes a lot of sense um, so I know you briefly mentioned about uh, detox. Uh, so what are the benefits of detox? Yeah, so when we detox, um, we're cleansing all the channels, right? So the very thing that the body needs to do is make sure environmental, emotional and physical toxins move out of the body. There is no way you can stop toxins from coming into your body because you are living on this planet and there is toxins. There's over... 200,000 more toxins on this planet since World War II, right? Or no, it's, no wow. sorry, more than that. 100,000 more toxins on this planet since World War II, wow. right? So that is what we we're exposed to. Now we have to try to deal with that and get that out as well as eating wrong food, as well as having emotional toxins and things like that. So we always say once to twice per year, you should do a detox because your body needs to reset itself. So reset the digestive system, clear out the toxins from the previous season or the season of your life. So you might have been through some sort of trauma or some sort of thing and your body needs to reset. Uh, it takes 36 days to heal all the channels in your body. There's seven channels in Ayurveda and it takes 36 days because you are what you eat at every fifth day. It's nourishing like your plasma, which is your lymphatic tissue. It goes into your blood, then it goes into your muscle tissue, then it goes into your fat, and then it goes into your bones, and then it goes into your nervous system, then it goes into your reproductive system. And the end product is what they call OJAS, which is your immune system. So if all of those channels aren't nourished, you actually have all the problems that start happening. And every five days, your body is um, pushing it to the next level. So you are what you eat after 36 days. So doing, we have a 28 day detox that we do plus one week. So we actually get them to cleanse for 36 days. They just don't know it. They think it's 28, but it's actually 36. Um, <laughs> and then we teach them how to maintain that because maintaining that is really important. So we teach them a two-day process, how to cleanse and how to fast the body for two days by eating really beautiful, easy to digest food. And our clients actually, they get rid of their problem. Um, we had a guy, uh, Peter in the UK, he came to us with blood pressure problems, cholesterol problems, and he needed to lose over 20 kilos. He's lost 20 kilos. His blood pressure medication went down. His cholesterol medication went down. He's still needing to lose more weight. But the fact is that he had he's maintained that for one year. He hasn't put it back on. And he's ready to do the next level, which is go a bit deeper. Um, and, you know, he, this is one year ago uh, that the shift. So a lot of our clients have the con 
consistency of that because they have the maintenance. Mm -hmm. So it's important to detox, but how to stay like that so the body doesn't retox after it's detoxed. Oh, that is amazing. So does juicing uh, comes in it as well? So can you juice how many days? So in Ayurveda, Ayurveda doesn't believe in juicing because it's cold and raw and hard to digest. With some clients, we do do it for a very particular reason because the system is low, the system is not digesting. We want to clean the liver. We do some very specific things or for cancer autoimmune disease or for um, IBS there's some very specific home remedies Um, but on a on a juice fast or a juice diet we've had a lot of people come to us or done water fast or done soup fast or things like that this actually makes the digestive system and agni um, fire very low um, and they feel great for the time that they do it but then everything starts to build up again because they haven't actually corrected the system or got the system working and built the intelligence in that system they've just stopped it from having these things and trying to let the body try to do it but they're actually not nourishing it so the person detoxes but they're not nourished a detox in ayurveda detoxes you but nourishes you at the same time so the person feels it's very complete so it feels really um, settled yeah yeah i think i need to go in one of those because even um i I think my system needs that right now um So um, how can you keep your, uh, you talked about external toxin, right? How can you keep your energies levels up without uh, uh, external toxins, you know? Um, if you're even if you're living in a polluted area, you know, you're in town, like, uh, where, where, you know, so how, how can you keep so it's, Yeah, so it's like what we said when we teach our clients how to clean uh, two times a week and how that is cleansing. So you're, you're flushing it out on a weekly basis anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay fantastic the energy stays nice and high no toxins in the body is lots of energy oh amazing lots of toxins <laughs> in the body is low energy yeah i think i think it's best like for us to just move into a cave or something <laughs> we'll still have toxin then because it's in the air <laughs> totally totally but see you know it's about um taking charge of yourself right because yeah. a lot of people say they let their mind take control and i can't do it i can't do it i've got this on i got this on right even if it's not night, even if it's not a hundred percent and you do it and you, you, it's going to be better than not doing it at all. Right. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, we really encourage people, but we always have people who sneak in a coffee or sneak in something and they're like, mm-hmm. but I didn't do it perfectly. Well, you know what? It's better that you did most of it than not do any of it. So let's stop the all for nothing type, you know, scenario. Yes. There might be some days you do it 100% perfectly, but why kick yourself and then have a really bad week and start again on Monday? Like, why don't you just say, oh, that meal didn't work so great. Let's start again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Because too many people are all for nothing. Well, I I can't do it. I can't do it perfectly. So I'm not going to do it at all. Yeah. Yeah. Perfection is not, is not a way forward. Is it, you know, you have to just, yeah, yeah. It's something that we, in our, in our medical system is the same thing right we we trying to become immortals you know we're trying to uh, create drugs for in labs that will just make us immortal but actually it's creating our side effects because that's not how it works right you know um yeah you know so i see quite a lot of people who are healthy you know they're doing all the exercises and they they into yoga meditation and um they to external they they're eating quite healthy as well healthy food but they still have health issues why do you think that is because it's there's something that's missing right there might be some pathology there might be some deficiency so we look at three pillars we look at you know is there toxins is it um you know mold is it bacteria is it virus is it bacterial is it um, environmental toxin is it radiation so there's a whole heap of different things then the next part is is there deficiency so is there a structural alignment is there deficiencies in vitamins and minerals or antioxidants right how is this affecting the body and the structure and the next part is Um, physiology how are their relationships how's their connection to spirituality outside themselves how's their connection to you know other human beings Um, how's their connection to their past self Mm. and also their future self right so that psychology will affect in those three pillars if any of those are out will cause toxins Mm. so it's not just a one thing like what do you eat so many people come to me i eat perfectly i ate this but if it's not good for your body type or if it's not good for your mind type then that's toxins for you it might be super organic it might be this but if it's toxins to your body because it doesn't suit your body because it's not 
um, it, it's not unique for you. You're a vata body type and you're eating salad, cold raw foods, juices, you're going to produce toxins because it's imbalancing your system. If you're a kapha body type and you eat, um, you know, potatoes and heavy foods and stews and, and casseroles and, and meats and things like that, even though it's classed, could be super organic, you're going to have toxins, right? So it, it is about individualizing it. Oh, yeah, that that makes perfect sense. And um, you talked about spirituality. I mean, the, your, when you get into that place where you have trust and faith inside of you, mm-hmm. everything just, it just yeah. comes into alignment, you know, like I said, I briefly said, talked about my spiritual sort of awakening where I felt connected to everything and everyone. And there was like no fear inside of me, you know, and right. And I was just cruising through life until I came back into the material world. I'm like, oh my God. And it's so funny because a lot of our clients, once they do the detox, they, they go, I've had anxiety for 15 years and this is the first time I haven't felt anxious. Mm-hmm. Well, the system and the cells and the energy in the cells are connected and feel calm and feel relaxed. And you're also trusting yourself because you're taking charge, mm-hmm. right? So there's something that shifts, something that moves and it's quite, it's unexplainable really. Um mm-hmm. We know it's a full picture. It's not just a, a one thing did it. It's like a holistic thing that did it. Yeah, absolutely. It's something that we're missing in the system now as well. Like, you know, it's, it's we need to implement a holistic side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we're coming to almost an end. I've got a couple of more questions and I also rapid fire questions for you uh, as well. And uh, so um, you created Health Dy- Dynamics with Roger Hamilton, right? Uh, can you tell us how that came about? <laughs> that that was interesting because I was at a event with Roger and he was speaking from stage and he was talking about the wealth dynamic side and I was like wow okay that's what's going on with the wealth dynamics there is got to be some link with the Chinese medicine because wealth dynamics is linked to Chinese medicine which is understanding your mind type there is something that has to link it to the Ayurvedic medicine I spoke to him in the break and I said there is something that should bring them both together. And he said, yeah, I think there probably is. Let's call it health dynamics. Let's work that out. I said, really? He said, yeah. So anyway, we we, we talked about that in an event and then I was at, um, you know, up an event in Bali and um, he sat down with me at dinner, uh, after dinner and he got down with his iPhone and he started asking me questions and he started, t- started typing all the answers in to his phone. And I was like, it's, you know, we were sitting there for like an hour and a half and people came up to me and said, how did you get Roger to sit for an hour and a half? <laughs> never, because he's a creative profile. He's always yeah. on the go. It's like quick, quick, quick. He never sits for an hour and a half and does that type of thing. Anyway, so he was downloading and all this stuff. And then the, the team said to him afterwards, oh, how was your chat with Joe today? And he said, yeah, we're good. We talked about this. We talked about this. We talked about this. He said, oh, my God, give me some paper. So he started scribbling. He had like this massive download. So Roger really connects a lot to patterns. And if you've seen his um, diary, he connects. He's actually connected all the religions together. He's connected all the different, you know, theories of life together. It's really amazing. He studied all the different uh, and studying the I Ching in Chinese medicine and then studied so many different things in the Indian medicine. And even in Bali, all the, the villas are called after the Indian God. So he studied all of that as well. He said, give me some paper. So he started scribbling and then he scribbled that out and then he started going again. And so what he did is he actually scribbled out a triangle. He said, oh, my goodness, health dynamics comes from the Tetagoras, the Pythagoras theory, the theory of numbers, the theory of 10. These are the 10 body types. These are the eight mind types. When we link it in together, it will create the 80 body types. And then he linked it into like 16 slides. This is the days of the week. This is the chakras. This is the the planets. This is the colors of the rainbow. Um, He linked it into the Metron cube, into the, (laughs) it just went on and on and on. And I was like, oh my goodness, it just blew my mind. And then from there, we spent a whole year creating and talking about um, the profiles. And then I pretty much wrote the reports. Um, 
And then we linked it all together and, and that's where it came from. Amazing. I mean, that guy is amazing. <laughs> I just said, I will never co-create anything again with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> because he's a creator and I'm a supporter profile. We drove each other crazy. And I had to go and do the karma after that because my body was so out of balance because I was in a creator mode instead of supporter mode. Mm. And I was wrecked. I went and my the doctor who trained me did my pulse. He said, what have you done to your body? You have every <laughs> single pulse that is possible in your body mm. available. I could teach a student all the different pulse combinations that are all in your pulse. Mm. And so basically I had to clean out the body because my body was out of flow for a whole year creating. It's not a natural state for me. It took a lot of my energy and out of flow. And then as soon as I got into teaching health dynamics and connecting people and having conversations and doing consults, I was back in flow again, oh, wow. but we had to obviously create it to be able to do it. So it was really good to see the awareness of that um, and, and see, yeah, like sometimes when you create something, you put, put yourself yeah. out of flow. <laughs> yeah, you do. And it's, it's, this is why one other thing is uh, getting a job or something that you're passionate about yes. is so, so important, right? Um, so important. Otherwise, it causes you health concerns. Oh, so definitely. many clients I've had who come who are very unhappy and are out of flow. And as soon as I say, I had a client once who is a mechanic profile and he was an engineer, amazing at his job, all the systems, data and process. He was so great at his job. They made him managing director and put him into a supporter role. He completely had depression. He um, put on 10 kilos. He had cholesterol problems. He had all these things just from a change of his position because mm. he was achieving. So he was achieving. They should have made him do more data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And with so, a higher pay because uh, <laughs> totally. that's that's what but, most people do like oh my god and at this job i'm gonna change career because this is better pay yes. this is better life i'll get the cars and the whatever i need but in the end and you then go the health out of goes down. yes <laughs> so like gandhi talks about your health is your real wealth so if you haven't got that it doesn't matter you can earn heaps of money but actually spend it all on getting your health back yeah <laughs> absolutely like i was actually telling my friend this uh, yesterday that um my eyes are like really dry right now I can't do anything I can't do any podcasting and everything and it's I have to invest so much in my health and I don't care about yes. the external you know I exactly. your health is wealth exactly. um so, so uh, about that with your eyes with dryness you just get a tiny little bit of ghee and at yeah, night time I do go bed yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I need one of yeah yeah the, apparently it's uh, allergies right now but um with my condition as well so i'm definitely gonna be on top of this in the next uh, yeah yeah <laughs> definitely not having a <laughs> um so um no before we um end this interview i've got like quick rapid fire questions for you okay uh so just fire away okay so first one is what is your definition of god Oh, wow. So God to me is somebody who is of a higher being, right? And I believe God is in everybody because I am a new you and within me. Uh, so God is a connection to obviously a higher being, a higher spirit. And I, I believe in, in God, like as in the Christian God, but I also believe that we all have that essence because we all share each other's DNA. Mm, beautifully said um so what do you think happens when you die oh okay. <laughs> Bye, my i've always feared that when i was younger i wanted to be frozen like in kept alive <laughs> and now i think you know my time will be done um i've been told that you know and and christianity doesn't talk about this with reincarnation but i've been told that my past life i was a indian male doctor and i've been mm. brought back as a female uh doctor uh, a female practitioner who can spread ayurveda to the world in a western way um you know i really believe that um you know on a, on a christian level that you're you're connected to your higher purpose mm. right connected to something where you, you go into the universe of, of a soul energy um and connected to a, a much deeper space yeah absolutely so uh how do you define religion and spirituality oh <laughs> religion i think religion like as because i've i've treated and looked after a lot of um, people in different religions where they feel 
that they need to do a certain, you know, rules and structure or, or authority or, or ways that they have to perform things um, to become what they think is spiritual. But spiritual is something which is what we call um, you have everything and you need nothing. Um, you are connected to the universe. All the energies are connected. Um, and your Gandhis and your Mother Teresas were a very true essence of this. They didn't actually care too much about the physical body. They were so connected to the spirit. So they were living in the spirituality and didn't think about the rules and structure of ordaining to something particularly to say I'm part of this, so this is who I am. Mm. They are M because they are with everything. Beautiful. Um, what's the lesson that took you longest to learn? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, probably pride, mm. you know. Like I was very much like with my dad, you know, sometimes a bit um, didn't give in or get, didn't, you know, let him in or, you know, forgive or, you know, and just have too much pride in it. And I saw this happen to my brother as well. And pride can really stop you from letting your heart be open and, and stopping you from connecting to things that are much more beautiful because you're too scared. And pride is because you're too scared to let someone love you. Yeah, and e ego comes in as well, right? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so I am, oh, actually, I, I'm going to skip that question because I know we don't have enough time. So do you believe there is an end to healing? An end to healing? I, I think that health is a journey. It's not a destination. Mm. So because your bodies are all, your cells are always rejuvenating um, and you're responsible for that rejuvenation. So in one year, you are 99% a different human being than you were the year before because every single cell is completely renewed. So then that means if you give it the right environment, the right ability to heal, the DNA of the previous DNA will learn its new being. But if you don't change anything, then, then nothing will change. Yeah. So I don't believe there's a destination. You get somewhere. I think you have to keep on working on it and have it as part of your identity. Mm, and it's through lifetimes as well. If you don't sort it out this lifetime, you come back in the next. So sort it out. Sorry, <laughs> Um, so I'll ask you that last question. Anyway, um, I'm fully in present moment when? Oh, okay. These are rapid fire questions. You didn't prepare me for any of these. Um, <laughs> That's the whole point. <laughs> okay. I'm fully in present moment when I'm helping people. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. One last one. The world needs more of what? The world needs more peace. Mm, yeah peace and love yeah um okay so this is a question i normally ask um everyone is what is that one message that you would like to share with someone who's going through adversity who's going through a dark night of the soul or spiritual awakening or they're um down with their health and depressed what would you tell them yeah so this happens a lot because i see a lot of clients like this and and in a neuro strategy it means they've hit rock bottom right they feel like there's no compelling future there's no way for them to move to something that they desire and they've lost sight of the vision of what they want and they're losing a little bit of their drive to get it so i always say to them you know one of the things i say is how bad could it be you could be drinking chocolate milk on the beach just to cut them out of the, the thought of everything is bad right mm. you know in in when you know most of them are not in a third world country so they have the ability but i say what is the first step that can make you uh, make some changes but also who could you help mm. Who could you help that is worse off than you? Because sometimes when we are giving to somebody, that return that comes back is so much joy and so much love and so much happiness that actually that clicks the cells into gear for healing. And you, you start to shift the gear anyway, and then you start to put some attention onto making sure you can help yourself. Absolutely. Totally agree. Um, so how can people contact you? Oh, okay. So we have, uh, um, if you're in Brisbane, Australia, then we have a clinic at West End. Um, it's called Back to Health. It is changing to Health Dynamics soon. So it's going to link to the online brand. If it is Health Dynamics, it's Health Dynamics 
360.com is our website and you can connect with um, an email at support at health dynamics with an S 360.com and um, they can connect with you. Amazing. Um, thank you so much, Joe, for coming on this podcast. I mean, uh, the wisdom and knowledge that you shared, it's just, I'm, I'm sure it's going to help so many people. And it's helped me quite a lot to see things in dis different perspective as well. So thank you so much. Is yeah. there anything else that you would like to say? Perfect. No, I think I'm really um, grateful that you're sharing so much of this knowledge with people. And um, I just want to share it with people that there is always hope. Um, and it's always like if you look at the stars in the sky, you know, there, there is a star which is shining. And while the stars are shining, there's always hope, right? Um, because there is always a light to follow. So um, keep looking towards that and keep following, uh, you know, the light so that you become more enlightened. And the more enlightened you are, the more, you know, complete you'll feel. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure, darling. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to Soul Awakenings with Madhya Sosan podcast. I would love to know what your biggest takeaway from this conversation has been. Share your thoughts on my Facebook and Instagram, Madhya Sosan. You can also check out my website, madhyasosan.com. If you would like to watch this episode, then head over to my YouTube channel, Mads Corner, M-A-D-Z Corner. If you enjoyed this episode, then please do rate and share this with your family and friends. Thank you once again, and I will see you on the next episode.